Now our store is laid out, everything is set up, categorized, and organized. So it's time to stock the shelves. Whether you're selling 10 products or hundreds, the process of adding products is the same. Like stocking shelves in a physical store, there are no shortcuts. It needs to be done methodically and well, but the payoff is huge. A well-organized store with proper merchandising, and in this case would be good photography and good descriptions, translates into more sales and a successful store. So let's go ahead and add a new product. So here in the admin, let's go ahead and click on products. And now click add new. And here we go. We'll just go through the fields now and describe what each one does. The part ID, you can use what the manufacturer supplies or something you use in-house, but this isn't shown to the customer. It's just how you ID the product. So let's go ahead and add that. Then add the name. Now this is what the customer will see on the front end. So make sure it's descriptive or a brand name of the particular item. Right now, We'll set this to no. We don't want it to show up in the store until we're done editing it. Charge shipping, yes. Which tax group we want to associate with, let's just go ahead and click it to standard. We'll leave this to zero right now, but again, you can force the sort order of this product as well. If you have hundreds of products, that becomes kind of time consuming. But if you only have 10 or 15 products, you may want them to appear in a specific order. So you can use this box to number them so they'll sort by that number. Now we go to main categories. What we're adding is a yo-yo, so what we want to associate with is toys. And then a secondary category. The one we're using is made of wood, so we'll click wood. That way if someone searches on toys and wood, they'll find it. Again, product options. We want to go ahead and click color because it's available in different colors. We'll leave the out of stock message the same. And a custom label. If we leave this in its default, then it won't show. And we're going to do that. Then click Next. Takes us to the descriptions. You have a short description or a preview description and the full description. Let's go ahead and put a full description in. Now, right now, I'm just using Greek text. But this is a crucial part about adding a new product to your store. You should make sure that the preview description and the full description are not only very descriptive to describe what the product is to your customer, but you should also use keywords in the description that will help search engines categorize the product as well. So well-written descriptions are really important and you should spend some time to make sure you do it right when you add it to the store. Additional information, if we don't post anything in this, it won't show. If so, it'll be available. We're just gonna leave that blank. Now we can do additional search terms. This will help the search on the site find it. If we have a lot of products, this is helpful. In this case, we don't, so I'm not going to add anything. But if you have a lot of products and you want specific words to be given preference, you could enter a comma delimited list in this field. And finally, the photos. We want to upload a photo. So go ahead and we'll click this. These are photos that are already available on the system. So if you already had a photo of this uploaded, you could just associate it here. But we don't have a photo of this yet, so let's go ahead and click the Upload and allows us then to choose a file. And I'll go ahead and browse to the photo that I have of that. Okay, start upload, and there it is. Doing this not only uploads the photo, but it resizes it to the various different sizes that we're gonna use in our store. And this is all done automatically. So we're ready for this, so we save the product. Now once you save the product, then you're given the option to create SKUs. Every product has to have at least one SKU. The reason for this is this is where we state the price, the weight, extra shipping costs, if any, and keep track of the stock. So it's important that we have a SKU. Now the stock keeping unit name or the SKU name, this doesn't show to the customer. This is how you just keep track of it in-house. So you may want to use the SKU ID that the manufacturer gives you for this product. That way it's easy to keep track. There we go. Price. We'll say we're selling this for five dollars. Let's say it's a six dollar manufacturer recommended price. Weight, and it would be there you go, quarter of a pound. Shipping costs. We'll leave that to zero because there's no extra shipping for it. 